In today's video, it's an A-level chemistry, standard level IB chemistry video, and we're looking at rules for determining oxidation states. When we're looking at oxidation states, it all relies on us understanding what oxidation and reduction are. So remember, oil rig will help you with this. So oxidation is the loss of electrons, whereas reduction is the gain of electrons. And that is key. However, at this high level, it's not always easy to see how electrons have been transferred in redox processes. And remember, redox processes are ones where oxidation and reduction occur at the same time. And therefore, oxidation states are a made-up tool made up by us in order to help us identify which species have been oxidized and which have been reduced. And basically, there's a whole set of rules you need to follow. And if you follow those rules, you'll be able to, first of all, work out the various oxidation states and secondly, work out what has been oxidized and what has been reduced. So to put that into words, oxidation states are a useful tool for allowing us to identify which species has been oxidized and which has been reduced. So here are oxidation state rules, or you could have said our oxidation number rules. It means the same thing. And our first rule you have to learn is that elements which are not combined with other elements have an oxidation state of zero. So let's look at some examples. Oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur as elements by themselves have an oxidation state of zero. For number two, the oxidation state or oxidation number of any young combined ion is the same as its charge. So taking sodium ion, for example, its oxidation state will be plus one. Calcium, its oxidation state will be plus two. So its oxidation state or number is the same as the charge on its ion. Rule three, the sum of all the oxidation numbers in a molecule is zero. Such as water, carbon dioxide, hydrogen chloride, etc. So the sum of all the oxidation numbers, so that means the individual oxidation numbers here. So the oxidation number of hydrogen and the oxidation number of oxygen, two lots of hydrogen plus the oxidation number for oxygen will equal zero. Carbon's oxidation number plus two lots of oxygen's oxidation number will also be zero, and so on. NB, linked to this point, we need to consider ions, and we're looking at more complicated ions, so ones which contain two or more elements, so I'm going to call that in a complicated ion, the sum of oxidation numbers is equal to the charge of the ion. So taking the ion SO42 minus, so the sulfate ion, what that means is if you add the oxidation number of sulfur to four lots of oxygen, you'll still have a net charge of two minus. For the nitrate ion, if you add the oxidation number for nitrogen to three lots of oxygen, you'll have a net charge of one minus. Next, up, a couple of elements which you just have to learn the numbers for. So hydrogen, try and remember that that always has an oxidation number or state of plus one. The exception is hydrogen combined as a metal hydride. And here it has an oxidation number of minus one. So you must learn that exception. Fluorine is the second element you need to know the oxidation number off by heart, and its oxidation number is always minus one. Oxygen now, this is slightly more complicated. It usually has an oxidation number of minus two. However, there are a few exceptions. So firstly, in peroxides, it has an oxidation number of minus one instead of minus two. And secondly, when it combines with fluorine, it has an oxidation number of positive one. In order for this to make more sense, let's write the peroxide formula, and that's H2O2. So hydrogen will have an oxidation state of plus one, and oxygen in this case, according to our exception, will be minus one. 
By the way, guys, some teachers might have taught you this in terms of which elements are more electronegative. So you treat covalent compounds as ionic compounds. Obviously, that method works too, but this, for me, is the most straightforward thing to do because you just have to learn a load of rules and it will make sure you get the answer right every single time. Anyway, rule seven, looking at chlorine now as the element. Remember that it always has an oxidation number of minus one. There is an exception here. So when it's combined with fluorine, it switches the sign of its oxidation number to being positive, and the same is true for oxygen. Now, the number it turns into will very much depend on the compound you find it in, and we will look at some examples to make sure that actually makes sense for you guys. And then the last rule, which is fairly straightforward, and hopefully you remember this from GCSE and IGCSE, for groups one to three, the oxidation number is the same as the group number. E.g. sodium is in group one, so its oxidation number is plus one. And make sure you realize that this is positive, by the way. Calcium is in group two, its oxidation number is plus two. Aluminium is in group three, so its oxidation number is plus three. So let's have a look at some various examples and we're gonna work out the various oxidation numbers of the elements found within these examples. So one, we're going to look at ammonia. Now, according to rule three, the sum of all oxidation numbers in a molecule is zero. We know that overall, this charge on the ammonia will be zero. And that's helpful because now we need to work out the various oxidation numbers of both nitrogen and hydrogen. So according to rule four, we know that hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one. We know that there is no overall charge. So because we have three hydrogens, we have a plus three charge. So what must the oxidation number of nitrogen be? Well, it must be minus three. Looking now at manganate seven ions, we know that the overall charge is minus one. So let's bear that in mind. We'll start with our oxygen we know that oxygen has a minus two charge. And so if we do four times minus two, then we end up with minus eight. And we need to get down to minus one in order for our ion to be correct. So what must the charge therefore be on the manganate? Well, it must be plus seven. I'm gonna write that now. So oxygen must be minus two, manganate will be plus seven. Hydrogen peroxide now, we know it's a molecule. It doesn't have a charge. So therefore, the overall charge must be zero. Notice in rule six, there's an exception which states that in peroxides, oxygen has a charge of minus one. So I'm just going to write that straight away. So two times minus one is minus two. We have two hydrogens, which means that each hydrogen must have an oxidation state of plus one. Guys, there's just a quick correction I want to make which is a long rule six where I said that when oxygen is combined with fluorine that it has a plus one oxidation state. Indeed that is correct sometimes but it can actually be variable depending on the compound it's in. So just if you change your notes and just write positive here that will make it much better and it's very similar to what we wrote for seven so sorry about that. And the reason why that's important is if I take a fourth example which is OF2 we know that fluorine has to be minus one. It says that in rule five. And because there's two lots of them, so that's minus two effectively, and we know that it can't have an overall charge, it means that oxygen must be plus two here, which is why I had to change rule six to just being positive rather than positive one, because that wouldn't have been completely accurate.